Well, this is what it's all about, Australian freshwater fishing. I've got the right rod, I've got the flies, I've got a terrific boat, and I'm out here in the outdoors, I'm gonna have a ball. This is paradise. But even in paradise, we do have to be careful. I wanna see you get home to your families at the end of the fishing trip. So if you follow some of these safety tips, I'm sure you'll have no trouble and you'll have a fantastic time. People tend to let their guard down when they're fishing in fresh water. It's not big and scary like the ocean, but there are things you have to be aware of. There's unpredictable weather, there's often obstacles in the water, and there are even things that you might not think about, such as snakes. No, I'm not trying to scare you. If anything, I'm encouraging you to get out there and share in the fun of fishing. Just that in the same way you think carefully about what gear to use, you should apply the same consideration to safety. Oh, Oh yeah, here we go, lovely little brown trout, worth coming up the mountains for that. Fishing with a mate or two is my best safety tip. I'm not saying you should be joined at the hip, but having someone nearby makes very good sense. If you're not sure about fishing in a certain area, you can always talk it over with them. And if you have an accident, there's someone else to help you or call for help if it's really serious. Hello? Emergency services? Of course, it also means you've got someone else as an eyewitness when you land that whopper. Clothing should be as light as possible while still maintaining the necessary warmth. When standing in a mid-depth creek or river, wearing clothing that's not cumbersome is also very important. Now today is a nice warm day so I can get away with light clothing to fish in. But even in winter, try and minimise big bulky outfits. That way, if you fall in, you've got every chance to get back out again. In the first place, steer clear of anything that makes it hard to walk and any bulky clothing. Once it gets wet, it's like a straitjacket. And be very wary of full length PVC waders. At least the neoprene versions have buoyancy. As far as waders and boats go, we recommend you just don't wear your waders in the boat. Odds are, if you fall out wearing waders, you're probably going to die. Even when dry, waders can be cumbersome. If you're unlucky enough to go over the side, any air trapped in the legs will be quickly squeezed out and the waders will partly or completely fill with water. Chances are you won't be able to swim, you won't be able to get them off, and the water in the legs will make it too heavy to pull yourself back in. You may even be too heavy for your mates to lift you back out of the water. Before setting out, prepare yourself well for all the likely conditions ahead and know what you might be getting into. It's an optic chart, looks fine. Nice high sitting over us. For example, many of you might be just heading down for a bit of lake fishing. Well, here's what you might find if a bit of wind gets into it. Perhaps you better pack your surfboard as well as your rods. If it's alpine fishing you're into, then next to freezing water temperatures are more than just bracing. Experienced fishers will all know the shock of exposure to cold water. It paralyzes your muscles, constricts your breathing, and your first instinct is always to panic. Lightning storms are potentially dangerous when you're fishing, whether you're in a boat or on the bank. Ways to look after yourself. If you suspect lightning's in the area, you can get into your car. That's fairly safe. And if you're stuck out right in the lightning, try and minimise your body position. Crouch down on the ground. Hope for the best. Don't get under a tree. You should be fine.
times like this you realise that fishing Australian fresh water can take you to some of the most beautiful places on the planet. Catching a fish in a place like this, it really is just a bonus. But a note of warning about the challenges of harder to get to areas. One minute you'll be crossing fast moving creeks and scrambling across slippery sharp rocks. The next you may be climbing down muddy banks. So if you want to go fishing in some inaccessible gorge, figure out your access route beforehand, equip yourself with good maps and know what to expect whether you're in a vehicle or on foot. Water levels at rivers and dams vary frequently and wet banks create unusual hazards for fishers on land or in boats. Dam levels can vary according to changing weather conditions. Always be on the lookout for unforeseen and uncharted rocks and snags. Fishers with boats are most at risk and there'll be more on this later. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you on this whole video is that before you ever set out on a fishing trip, leave a plan of your route and schedule with your family the police or local rangers and that way if trouble does come along people know where to find you and while you're at it check with locals about conditions they might not give away details of their secret spots but they're happy to help you avoid specific hazards go with reliable resourceful mates and carry some mode of communication or emergency contact these days gps units are within the budget of the stingiest fish owners. i've even got one of course the humble mobile phone is a good standby no matter which carrier you're with 112 will always connect you with emergency services if you're in range. If you're planning to be out of range, an EPIRB or emergency positioning beacon could save your life and be the best bucks you ever spend. When you're driving to your favourite fishing location, make sure your vehicle's well maintained, check your wheel bearings, and don't drive too fast. You might have a boat and trailer on the back, you don't want to crash. I know I'm going to have a ball, I'm going to take it easy, and I'm going to catch one hell of a lot of fish. A lot of roads out here are badly maintained and signposted, so don't be too ambitious. A breakdown 100 kilometres from help is more than just a pain in the neck. A few things to watch out for are your speed, having spares and especially animals like roos and cattle on the road. Emergency supplies and gear in case of unscheduled stays should include space blanket, water, fire starter, compression bandage and emergency food. Wherever you go and whatever you do, remember you're a visitor. Respect the locals and they're sure to reply with some crucial local knowledge on conditions. Back on the subject of fishing companions, here are a few you don't want to cuddle up to. Snakes are your main worry in the wildlife department, and like it or not, this is Australia and it's full of bites, both big and small. Snakes love to come out in the warmth of the day and sun themselves on exactly the same rocks you might consider perching yourself on. So while you don't want to alert the fish to your presence, give the snakes a heads up by walking heavily and look ahead. Hi, I'm John Can, but better known as the snake man from La Perouse. My family's been showing snakes there for over 90 years now and one of our main points is the treatment for snake bite. It varies a little bit with different departments but the one I recommend is what is recommended from Northern Territory where they treat more snake bites than anywhere else and that is not the light one you can see through but a six inch heavy duty crate bandage which is elastic just start at the bite site and you go up and then you can come down. The tension that they recommend must be tighter than that on a sprained ankle. That's why, if possible, there must there always be someone else there. And if there is, they're the ones that apply the bandages. The bandage or the arm is then rested completely. The leg is splintered. The victim should not walk unless it is critical that they walk to a road or somewhere like that if they can't be helped.
Boat fishing is absolutely huge in all our impoundments and our big dams. And you really have to have your mind on safety when you're out there. When you put your motor in gear, make sure you put your brain in gear as well. In this series on safe fishing, you'll find a whole DVD devoted to fishing from a boat and some of the problems that you might encounter. A suitable add-on here that all boat-based fishers should be familiar with is a buoyancy vest. The vests are so light and so small you forget they're on and they're affordable. Other safety issues on a boat relate to handling and chief among them is sticking to a safe speed. Another tip is don't rely only on electronics. Line of sight is always crucial. Many a seasoned boat has fallen foul of rough weather on a lake and there have been too many fatalities, especially with strong winds on shallow dams. This particularly includes anglers in kayaks and canoes, which have their own issues. Kayakers and canoeists need to be experienced in handling and reading the conditions and what to do if they do capsize or come out. One danger is getting run down by a powerboat or being upset by the weight. Not many of these places have navigational aids like channel boys and once you add strong winds or a dark night, the worst case scenario can be catastrophic. Here's a good mate of mine, Jason Wilhelm, and he's fully aware of all the dangers of fishing in big empowerments. Thanks, Bushy. Boating etiquette is not just about being polite and whatnot, it's about safety. This means being aware of all boats, especially smaller boats, and not going too near them, reducing your weight, knowing the rules of giving weight, and obeying navigation boys. Finally, don't overbalance or overload your boat. It's a recipe for disaster. All boat-based fish -o should wear buoyancy vests or PFDs. Might not catch any more fish, but at least you can tell the tale of the one that got away. Reliability with boats is crucial. We all know it's at that very moment you need to kick-start the outboard because the weather's closing in, but a badly maintained motor will not respond. This is the only cold one I drink when I'm on the water. Considering most boating accidents are alcohol-related, when I'm on the water, I'm on the water. In life, there are no guarantees. Accidents can and will happen, so be prepared for any emergency. If you just pulled your mate out of the cold water, get a blanket or a towel around them straight away. And warm them up. Keep them relaxed and monitor for changes in behavior. Know where to get help if you need it, and make sure you know your exact location if you need to get emergency rescue in. We're up at the Cox River in the Lithgow. What about doing a CPR course? Every year, many lives are saved by friends, family and strangers who know how to administer CPR. Try St John's or the Red Cross for inquiries about these courses. These safety tips should really help you enjoy your time out here so you can concentrate on what's really important, the fishing. So don't put your life on the line.